This video is an affiliation with Collingwood Insurance. More on that one later, but for now, spiral roundabouts. There isn't actually such a thing as a spiral roundabout. It's not even mentioned in the highway code. It's just something we call big roundabouts because the lanes start from the inside of the roundabout and they leave on the outside of the roundabout. In the same way, the line of a spiral starts in the middle and as it makes its way around, it goes to the outside of the circle. Here is a snippet from a video I uploaded about 18 months ago, which includes some information on spiral roundabouts so you have an idea of how they work. Here you can see a car starts in lane three to take exit three. As it passes exit one, it will go down to lane two. As it passes exit two, it will then go down to lane one, ready to leave at exit three. There's a link to that video in the description if you want to view the whole thing. But basically how a spiral roundabout works is you start on the inside of the roundabout and you gradually make your way to the outside of the roundabout to leave because you can't be on the inside of the roundabout and leave when there's multiple lanes as that would be dangerous. Every time you pass an exit, you'll move one lane to the outside. You'll get one lane closer to the outside, but it doesn't always work like that. That's just a rough guide to give you a heads up of what to expect. What you really have to do in these junctions is follow the road signs and the road markings to know where you need to go. But the problem is the road signs and markings are either very poor or non-existent or so late that it doesn't actually give you a chance to get into the lane you need to be in. Now I'm gonna show you a couple of examples of spiral roundabouts I know to show you how they actually work and why they're so challenging and can be quite chaotic. So this is the Birch Hanger roundabout. I use this roundabout if I need to go north, if I need to go towards Cambridge, Birmingham or the Lake District. It's about 45 minutes away from where I live and I probably only use it three, four, maybe five times a year. So I don't know off the top of my head when I go to use it. I do need to follow the road signs and markings, which there is a distinct lack of road signs. I'll tell you that. Anyway, as I come down this road from Colchester, big sign says Cambridge M11, turn right. And I know I need to go towards Cambridge and past Cambridge on the way to where I'm going. So I'll go into the right lane and hope that's the right lane. And as I get to here, it says M11 North. So great, I'm in the correct lane to go towards where I'm going, the M11 North. Also lane two says M11 North as well. So you can use both lanes to go there. And then you have this line where you have to wait because it's a traffic light controlled roundabout. So we wait at these red lights. Now, normally, when you go around a roundabout or a spiral roundabout, as you pass an exit, say I'm passing this exit here, you will go one lane to the left. So if I'm in lane three, I'll go to lane two. If I'm in lane two, I'll go to lane one. But I don't actually recommend you do that until you see the signs and road markings because it's not always the case. You don't always have to change lane. And what you don't want to do is change lane only to have to go back to the lane you were already in before because that can be even more awkward. So I recommend you stay put until you see the road signs and markings. So when the lights go green, I'll carry on and I'll go around here in lane three. I'll stay in lane three. And then fortunately, lane three says M11 North. Bear in mind, I can't see that when I'm back here. I have to get here to see that. You can't see that that way. And there's always cars in the way as well. You can't read them until you get there. And it's services. So if I need to relieve myself, great. I'm in the correct lane to do that. Um, and then we've got another line here, which is a stop line for some traffic lights. When they go green, I'll carry on. I'll stay put, I stay in this lane free. And it says M11 North still, but where's the services gone? Now the services has gone to lane two. So if I wanted to go to the services, I would have to change down to lane two now, which is a bit silly because they told me lane three back here. Why don't I just put it on lane two to begin with? Anyway, that shouldn't be too hard though, because I have quite a long time to change into lane two there if I needed the services. But I don't need the services, so I'm gonna carry on round in M11 North and I'll rotate the map again, and zoom out a little bit, and we've got another stop line at some traffic lights. And what happens here at this section of the junction is lane one peels off and goes towards the M11 South, towards London. Lane two becomes one, and lane three becomes two. I'm in lane two, I'm gonna stay put, I keep going, I end up in lane two here. Did I say I'm in lane two? I'm in lane three here, aren't I? I'm in lane three to begin with. Let's stay with that. 
I move on, I carry on at the green light, and I end up in lane two. But this is where the problem is, you see. For me, I'm all right. It's all right for me, because M11 North still, I haven't had to change lane, I'm good. But what about these poor people in lane two here, in this lane? They're going along, they're just staying put, haven't changed lane, and now they're being told, this actually says, a120 west and services so they can't use this lane to go m11 north anymore they have to actually move one lane to the right which is difficult because this lane lane two is normally filled with people going towards m11 north but there is another lane on the right now that says m11 north so people in lane two could move to the right to allow room for people in lane one to move to the right themselves so they can go to lane two but it doesn't happen it basically requires everyone to move one lane to the right there, which is ridiculous, really, and that doesn't ever happen on roundabouts. I can't think of another roundabout where I've been in, say, lane two and have to go up to lane three. You only ever start in, say, lane three and go down to lane two, then go lane, down to lane one and then leave. I don't know any other roundabout where you have to actually go to the right. And let's take a look at this again. So you go from lane two to one, and then when you get here, you could go from one to two so you're changing effectively you're changing lane twice although you haven't added the change lane here it's changed automatically but you're you're all over the place and that's why this is chaos anyway let's say i i know this so I, i've come here and i can see that these poor people need to get in this lane so i've moved over the, to this right lane here to lane three to help them and i get there at this stop line at the traffic lights and again i'm going to stay put when the traffic lights go green i'm in lane three and this is why it's important to number lanes not say left middle or right because there's four lanes here so they can't really have a middle there's two middle lanes so if you're lane two you can stay in lane two if you're lane three you can stay in lane three and that makes it easier to have numbers so i'm in lane three as i come around here i'll go for lane three which is this one here and it says m11 north great and lane two here also says m11 north so no one has had to change lane on this bit we're fine at this line now, the lights go green again. We set off, I stay put, I'm in lane three, carry on round into lane three, and now I'm being told, aha, I can't actually go towards the M11 North anymore in lane three. I've got to move one to the left. And that's the problem here, because now everyone who is in lane two here has stayed in lane two there, not moved to lane one. You can see it on this here, actually, is this is actually a relatively empty lane. No one really goes there. So I've helped people, if you remember, on this part, I've helped people from move by moving from the middle lane here, lane two to lane three, to help them get into that lane. Remember that I moved over for them, and now they need to move back over for me, and quite often they don't, which is a pain. So on this occasion, everyone does have to move one lane to the left as they pass this exit here, like, like a spiral roundabout should technically, how it should technically work. If I have managed to get into this lane, then I can use this lane to leave. If I haven't, I shouldn't leave. I should go round the roundabout and try again. Most of the time, with my signal though, I do manage to get into that lane. People do help out, but it is normally chaos. This is junction 28 on the M25 and the A12. It's an important junction for me because it's the way home when I'm on the M25. Earlier I said I couldn't think of any other roundabouts where you had to move from the left lane to the right lane as you went round them, but I have just thought of one and it's this one. So let me show you this roundabout and let me show you why it's a little bit ridiculous. So you're going north on the M25 and you leave at junction 28 here and you want to go A12 east. So you leave and you think, what lane do I need to go A12 east? And it says here, both lanes. You can use both lanes. Okay, that's cool. So I carry on in the left lane and then it splits to two. Hang on a minute. So my left lane's now split to two. Which lane do I need? But there's signs over here or a sign over here telling you what lane you need. And it's saying you need lane two and three which then is confirmed there. So that's not a problem, you've got time to do that. You've got time to then get into lane two or three. But I was in lane one, so I'm probably gonna be in lane two by this point. Then I stop at this line here at the red light. And this is where the fun starts because there's four lanes here and three lanes here. So something has to give. That's not a problem because lane one here can go A12 west and branch off like the way Spiral out roundabouts normally work, so the left lane branches off, and then lane two here becomes lane one, 
lane three becomes lane two and lane four becomes lane three. So remember, I'm in lane two here, having followed the signs. So the lights go green and I set off. And I come this way and now I'm being told, oh, I can't go A12 east anymore. I've got to go M25 north. And there's no way I'm going M25 north because if I go there, I'm stuck on this main road for another eight miles until I get very, very far away to the uh, M11, uh, which is junction 27. And then I'll have to negotiate that roundabout, which isn't really a roundabout. It's uh, something else, that's for another video, to come back, which it's a very long time. Uh, so I really do want to avoid that. Therefore, I'm going to need to get to lane two here. I'm in lane one, I can, no long, I can no longer use this lane. I need to move over one lane to the right to be able to go A12 east. And that's why it's chaos here, because everyone sees this and they all start trying to change to this lane, change one lane to the right. What I think really needs to happen is this lane here that says M25N should say A12E as well, because I don't see why both these lanes can't go towards A12 east. Let me show you, because as you go round the roundabout further, both these lanes say A12 East. So there's no reason to cause all that chaos here, making everyone go to this lane two to only be able to use lane one and two again here. It's not as if lane two here is going straight. So that's gonna come into conflict with lane one if they go round the roundabout. Lane one can leave or go round. They're not coming in conflict, in conflict with anyone because A12 East is the middle lane, they have to go round. And then you'll stay in your same lane as you go around here under the bridge, which you can see because Google Earth is pretty cool. Look at that. You can even see the road markings. Well done, Google. And then you go under the bridge, come out the other side of the bridge here, take your exit. And on your exit, both these lanes now merge, as you can see by these arrows. And you carry on up the A12 towards Chelmsford, Colchester and Ipswich. They're the major, route, major towns on that route. So it's basically like musical chairs, but it's not musical chairs anymore. It's musical lanes. They can move the lanes wherever they want. And it's okay if you use the roundabout regularly or you're local because you, you know where you're going. And if you're a local, you can be like, oh, well, yes, I've done this roundabout many times. I know exactly what lane I need. Oh, look at you over there in the wrong lane. Ha <laughs> yeah, ha, well, I'm not giving up my space. You're gonna have to go round again, aren't you? In actual fact, they probably did the exact same mistake the first time they did the roundabout. When you know a spiral roundabout or when you know a complicated junction, bear in mind that other people may be chopping and changing lane because they don't know where they're going. And it's not always their fault that they don't know where they're going. Sometimes it's poor road signs and markings and not enough time to react to them. The best way to deal with complicated junctions is to plan your journey. So before you set off on a long journey, look on Google Maps, look at the major junctions you're gonna be doing to get an idea of what lane you're gonna need. Because most of the time, even if you drive across the country, you're not gonna be doing too many of these major junctions. You're gonna spend most of the time on an M road or an A road. But if you get that heads up by using Street View or Google Earth or Google Maps and actually using the uh, satellite view, so you actually get to see the lanes and the road markings, that's a great help and, give you, and it can give you a really good head start. What if you can't get into the correct lane? You're in the wrong lane and you're stuck. Well, then it's probably better to go the wrong way. Don't change lane dangerously and don't stop in your lane with your indicator on holding up a flow of traffic because it can be dangerous. You're better off just going the wrong way. When you go the wrong way, quite often it only adds several minutes to your journey, especially if you're following the sat nav because that will just reroute you a slightly different route. Okay, there are some instances where if you go the wrong way, you're gonna be 20 minutes out of the way, like that one I gave, the example I gave earlier about going on the M25 and ending up going all the way to junction 27 to the M11, it's like eight miles away. It's gonna add like 20 minutes to your journey. So yeah, I really don't want that to happen, but that is rare. Most of the time, going the wrong way is only a small inconvenience, and it's certainly better than risking causing an accident. A common question I get is, should I indicate left to leave a roundabout if I'm not actually leaving, I'm just changing lane? Or would it look like I'm leaving, which would cause people to pull out in front of me? Well, you have to answer that question yourself. You have to think about how far away you are from the exit. 
in terms of distance in front of you or in width. If you're in lane three and the exit's really far away and you indicate left to change lane two, it's hardly gonna look like you're leaving. But if you were really close to the exit and you're indicating left to change lane, it might look like you're gonna change lane and leave, in which case you may not want to signal because no signal is definitely better than a misleading signal. And you don't want to make people think you're leaving the roundabout if you're not, because others will pull in front of you. But most of the time, these big junctions, they are very big, and there's a big distance between each exit, so there's plenty of time to indicate a change lane without actually looking like you're indicating to leave the roundabout. So these junctions are challenging. There's no quick fix. Try your best to follow the road signs and markings, stay calm, and be prepared to go the wrong way. Leave a little bit of extra time on your journey if you're doing a long journey. If Google Maps say it's three hours, don't leave three hours, maybe leave three and a half hours. You probably need to leave a little bit more than that because you may need a toilet break as well. Also, looking at a map like Google Maps and the satellite view, you can see your lanes to help you plan and know and get a heads up of what lane you need. Understand that every time you pass a major exit, you are likely to go one lane to the left. Although sometimes, as you have seen in this video, it can be one lane to the right, but that is rare. If you think this video is gonna help you with big complicated junctions, then please give the video a thumbs up and check out Conningwood and Confused in the description. Collingwood are really good if you're looking to insure yourself when you're learning to drive, because you can insure yourself on a friend or family member's car without affecting their policy or risking their no claims bonus. Also, there's long-term policies available and short-term policies available. If you go for a long-term, you will get a pro rata refund if you cancel early, say if you pass your driving test. Using the link in the description does support this channel, and there's up to 35% off and a £20 Amazon gift card in there at the moment as well for you. I do recommend you compare your quotes, so check out the link to confuse.com. Using the link does support this channel and it allows you to compare in many, many insurers to make sure you're getting the best price. I recommend checking them out and Collingwood to make sure you get the best deal. To get my future videos, please subscribe and until the next one, cheerio.